In this second segment of our four-part tutorial on Polarian LiveDoc documents, we'll look at how to import a Microsoft Word document into Polarian, how to preview the import result, how to define import rules to recognize work items from the document content, and how to save import rules for reuse when importing similar documents. Here's a sample requirement specification document in Word. It's purposely pretty trivial to make it easier to see what's going on, but things work the same with real-world documents. You can see it has a table of contents, here's an image, some plain text here that doesn't need to be managed in the project workflow, and there are also some tables, and there's a lot of content that we'll want to manage as discrete requirement artifacts. So let's see how to take this document off the desktop and onto the web with Polarian. Live docs are always part of some project, so you need to have the project open. And we have one open here. In navigation, you select Documents and Wiki, and when the main page loads, you click the button labeled Import Document. Now browse to the Word document you want to import and select it. You can leave configuration alone for now. We'll discuss import configurations later. The document uploads to Polarian Server where you see it in a preview mode. It's important to understand that you haven't committed to anything. You're just seeing how the document will look in Polarian after you do. Let me just scoot navigation out of the way so we can see a bit more of the document preview. In preview mode, you can look over the document and see how things look. This document has all the main things we saw in Word, if you remember. The TOC, image, tables, etc. Now the thing that's really important here is the fact that some of the document's content has been recognized and marked as discrete artifacts to be tracked and managed through the life cycle. Now what caused that to happen? The answer is import rules. Import rules cause work items to be created from document content elements based on one or more conditions. For example, here we have a keyword condition that says if specified keywords appear in a content element, like a paragraph or list item, the content should be marked as a discrete work item of the type specified by the import rule, in this case a requirement. We can see the must keyword in this text, and the icon on the left border shows it's being recognized as a discrete requirement according to the current state of the import rule. You can have multiple conditions for more fine-grained control over the recognition. For example, maybe the document has some style and you want any content formatted with it to be marked as a work item. Whenever you change an import rule, use Preview to check its effect. Every document is different, so this is really a trial and error process. Remember, nothing is committed to the system until you click Import. You can check what content has been recognized and marked, the structure of items, exactly what the import result will be if you import right now. Notice that all the marked work items are assigned the should have severity level. Now that's not caused by the current import rule. It's happening because the project configuration's default severity for new work items is should have. But if we look at this uh, default import rule, we see two keywords, must and should. Even with the small number of requirements in this sample document, it makes sense to have the importer set must have severity on recognized work items containing must and should have severity on content with the should keyword. Import rules can definitely do that and a lot more. One of the great things about them is that once you get one right for some type of document, you can save the rule and reuse it later when importing similar documents. Let's look at an example I did earlier and saved. This previously saved import configuration, which I invoke from this dialog, contains a more complex import rule than the default rule we just saw. It causes relevant severity values to be set on work items recognized with the keyword conditions. Actually, there are two different rules here. Both use advanced options, which enable more fine-grained control over work item recognition. For example, this one says that upon recognition of the must keyword, Polarian should execute a specified action. In this case, give the work item the must-have severity value. There's a similar rule with conditional action for the should keyword to set should have severity on items containing that keyword. If we now preview the document and check, we see that the severity level is set as we want in work items recognized on the basis of the must and should keywords. 
This compound import configuration is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to what you can achieve with import rules. You can make them as simple or as complex as necessary to get the work item recognition you want. And saving as an import configuration means you never have to reinvent the wheel. Now that we're sure we'll get the work items we want and won't need to spend hours defining them manually, we can click Import to commit everything to the repository and create the requirement artifacts in Polarian. That's all for this second segment in our series on working with Polarian Live Docs. Next in the series is offline collaboration using Roundtrip for Microsoft Word and managing document variants with Polarian Live Branch. You can send comments or questions about anything related to Polarian to the Polarian team at info at polarian.com.